These providers' main purpose is to pass the data down the widget tree. What is my purpose? Pass the butter. Providers is a way for you to pass data down the widget tree. For example, we have a simple app with a provider widget on top. So instead of thinking of it as a widget tree, I would like to think of it as a widget waterfall. Then we are going to send data from the provider on top, represented as a boat, down to the home title as such. No matter which provider you use, whether it is the future provider, the stream provider, the proxy provider or the change notifier provider, these providers' main purpose is to pass the data down the widget tree. What is my purpose? Pass the butter. If you're new here, like and subscribe and consider looking through the provider course that I have just released link in the description. If you're new to provider, you might be thinking what is the point of passing down the data through the provider? So an example is that you might have data in a widget to be passed down to the child widget. So this is manageable as you're able to create a constructor argument in your child widget to get the data. However, it can get really messy if you were to do it as the widget tree grows. So this is a sign of a beginner Flutter developer. Well, I used to do this professionally. Yikes. So therefore, to combat this hard to maintain structure, Flutter team has created this thing called the inherited widgets that helps pass data down the widget tree. However, to pass a single object, you have to create a lot of boilerplate and this can be very, very confusing for beginners. Therefore, the Flutter team has created a new package called Provide. However, there was a similar and a better package that is called, you guessed it, Provider that Remy has built. Therefore, after much discussion, the Flutter team deprecated the Provide package and made Provider the go-to package to pass data down the widget tree. Thank you, Remy, for this awesome package. So in essence, Provider is a wrapper for the inherited widget. And you can see the difference in the line of code. Inherited widget requires a lot, while Provider uses very little line of code. For this video, we are going to go through the common providers that you might use in your actual work or your side project. And let's start with the first one, which is the provider. So I have with me here a simple project that has a home page and a settings page. So what we are going to do is we're going to wrap this material app widget with a provider and then inside this provider, it requires a create parameter. So the create parameter requires an argument context with the return type data. So for this example, we are going to provide the data of type string. And then we're going to pass down this string that is called flutter dev. So this means that this flutter dev string will be available in our home page and settings page. And now if we were to go to our home page, in order for us to get the provided value, what we can do is we can create a final variable that is called username and we are going to use the provider dot of context method and this requires a specific type that we are listening to which is the string type and then for our username over here we can swap this user not found text with the username and now if you were to save this let's see how it looks like in our app so you can see our home page over here has the flutter dev string so if you were to go to settings you could see that there is this user is not found text so let's add in our username in our settings page. So we can just copy this line of code and go to our settings page and paste it right beneath our build method. Then we're going to swap the user not found text with the username. And now if we were to save this, you could see right under our settings page, there is our flutter dev string. So another question you might ask is what if the provided value gets updated. So a simple example can be if you were to have a future builder 
that listens to this get username function where basically it returns the username string object and then we will create a simple name variable that if the snapshot has a data then we are going to return the future result or the snapshot data itself which is just a simple string however if it does not have a data then we will return this loading string and then with this name variable we're going to pass through the provider over here so now if we were to save this and refresh our app if you were to look inside our simple app you could see there is this loading over here so this is not working right so if you were to put a breakpoint and if you were to hover over the name you could see that the loading string has appeared and then if you were to continue this and hover over the name variable you could see that the flutter dev string has appeared so this means that our future has successfully returned the result string but if we were to continue and let the whole app render successfully you only can see the loading text so this is because that the provider does not get updated then we are going to make use of this thing called the provider.value so what provider.value does basically allows us to have our value to get updated so now we can change this create parameter to a value parameter if you were to save this let's see if it works so you could see there was a loading and then the flutter dev appeared so the thing is for the result from a future builder to be passed down the widget tree we will need this whole boilerplate which includes a future builder and provider dot value so is there a simpler way for us to send the results of our future down through our provider yes there is so there is this thing called a future provider which is a provider that listens to a future object and provide its value to the child and descendants so before we have the future builder and provider the after would be like this so you have a future provider that has a string type which means that we need to get a future object that returns a string type as well and it has simplified so many things for us and now if you were to save this you could see there was a slight red error and then we have our result so why is that so our future provider initial data is a null so do we have an initial data parameter in our future provider yes we do so we can type in initial data and then for our initial data data type it will be a string so we are going to add in a loading string and now if we were to save this you could see there is a loading and then there is the flutter there so this initial data comes in very handy if you were to do asynchronous providers talking about asynchronous providers other than a future provider we also have the stream provider and what the stream provider does is that it listens to a stream similar to a future and then it provides its result to the child and descendants so the difference between a stream and a future is that a stream has a list of events while a future only has one event so let's create a simple stream provider let's change the future to the stream provider word then for a future we can create them into a stream by using this as stream method so this creates a stream containing the results of this future so now if you were to save this let's see if it works so you saw the loading and then you see the flutter dev but if i want to have more than one provider is there a way for us to create more providers yes there is so there is this thing called the multi provider so what the multi provider does is that it combines multiple providers into a single linear widget tree so the thing is without multi providers if we want to have multiple providers in our widget tree we will do something like this where we will nest each providers in one another which is very very messy and is hard to read so having a multi provider allows us to see the different providers that we have so we have this provider and this something else provider 
and this another thing provider. And all of these providers will be sent linearly into the child widget, which is called some widget. So let's do that in our simple example. And inside our my app widget, we have this multi provider that has a list of providers over here. So we have the stream provider and then we have the future provider. And then we can just pass in the child widget, which is our material app widget. So for our stream provider, it is something new, which is an integer type with the initial data zero. So this stream is called the get developer experience stream. So this gives us how much years of experience we have in being a Flutter developer. And then we have our normal future provider. However, we don't want them to be passed down our widget tree individually. So is there a way for us to combine these two providers data into one? Well, there is. Introducing the proxy provider. So what a proxy provider does is that it builds a value based on other providers. A simple example is we will have a proxy provider 2, which means we are combining two providers, provider A and provider B. And then we are going to combine these two providers data into one new value. So let's do that. So inside our my app widgets, we are going to create another provider inside our multi provider that is called the proxy provider. And then we are going to combine two providers. So we're going to make use of this proxy provider two. So the proxy provider two has a required update parameter. But before we add in anything inside our update parameter, we need to add in our data types. So the first two data types parameter is the data type that we require, which is the integer from our stream provider and the string from our future provider. However, there is still an error because for this proxy provider too, it requires a third data type parameter. So the third data type parameter is the data type that we want to return. So the data type that we want to return is this thing called a user. So a user class simply has these two properties, which is the name and Flutter experience. Then we also have a two string method. This gives us a simple string where it says our username has the number or integer years of Flutter experience. So we're going to make use of this user.toString in our different pages. But first we need to combine the two data types, which is the string and integer into this user object. So now we're going to add in this function that has the context, the value, value two, and the previous. So if you were to hover over the first value, it is the integer type. So we're going to rename this as the Flutter EXP or experience. And then if you were to hover over the second value, you could see it is the string. So we're going to rename it to the name. And lastly, it is this thing called the previous, which is the user. So we can just put in a placeholder. And now we're going to return the user object. So we're going to type in return user brackets and then we're going to add in the different parameters. So for the first one is Flutter Experience. So we're going to add in our, our Flutter EXP or Experience for short. And then second is our name. So we're going to pass in the name variable as such. And now with this user object that has been passed down inside our Flutter app, we can go to the different pages. So inside our home page, we can just type in user and then instead of a string, we're going to listen to a user object type. And then instead of the username, we're going to type in a user dot to string. And then we're going to do the same in our settings page. So we're going to paste this as such and then do the same thing inside our text widget. So user dot to string. And now if you were to save in all files, now you could see there is this loading and this stream that counts how many years of Flutter experience we have. So this is working. We got the combination of the string from our future provider and the integer from our stream provider inside this user object.
And now lastly, we're going to go through the change notifier provider. So before I explain what is a change notifier provider, I'm going to explain to you what is a change notifier. In my own words, I would say a change notifier is a storage for states. So you can store different states inside a change notifier. Then it's also a place where state changes. So you can create functions and methods that allows you to change the state. So a change notifier provider then listens to a change notifier and then it will provide the data from the change notifier and rebuild whenever this method is called, which is called notify listeners. So we have a simple change notifier, which is called visit notifier. So this change notifier basically tracks how many visits a single page has. We will have a counter for our home visits and a counter for our settings visit. Then we have two method, which is called on home visit and on settings visit. So if this on home visit method is called, then we will increase the home visit counter and also notify the listeners. Same goes to the settings visit as it increases the settings visit counter. Lastly, we have a string getter method where we will display how many times each pages have visited. So we're going to add the two methods on home visit and the on settings visit in our buttons over here. But before that, we're going to pass the visit notifier or our change notifier inside our multi provider. So let's create a change notifier provider and then we're going to add in the visit notifier. So we're going to return the visit notifier. So now our material app has the visit notifier. So we can go to our home page and then inside this home page, we are going to create a new variable that is called visit notifier. And then we are going to make use of the provider.of method. And instead of listening to the user, we're going to listen to the visit notifier. And with the visit notifier, we're going to add in our method inside our home page, which is called on settings visit because we are navigating towards the settings page. Once we have added our on settings visit method, then we're going to add a simple text widget just below our elevator button to show how many times we have visited. So we're going to do the same thing inside our settings page. So inside our settings page, we're going to create another variable that is called visit notifier. And then inside our on pressed of our elevated button, we're going to type in the visit notifier on home visit method. So once we have created the on home visit method, then the next thing is we're going to create a text widget just below our elevated button to show how many times we have visited the settings page. So now once it's saved, now we go to the settings page. You could see that our settings page has been visited the first time and if we were to go back to our home page, it says that our home page has been visited the second time and then it goes accordingly as such. So in summary, we have learned the different providers, which is the provider, future and stream provider, multi and proxy provider, and lastly, change notifier provider. If you want to explore more projects using provider, you can check out the provider course and the Flutter with Firebase course link in the description. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below and comment down what providers you want me to go through next. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.